All right, welcome to a new episode of Raw Take for CEOs. It is October 7th, and we are one week into the fourth quarter. Thank you, Steve, for joining, and everyone, our audience. So today we are going to be talking about, uh, kind of touching on some news. It goes without saying that the last six months have been quite difficult for manufacturers, service-based businesses, even high-tech venture-backed companies to hire talent. Today, we want to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, as our businesses have, we can say, our businesses have survived a global pandemic, um, inflationary pressures, supply constraints. Not that we've closed the chapter on any of those, but we're well well into those chapters. I think we've begun to see is, and what some are coining, the great resignation of mm-hmm. 2021. You know, this is going to be yet another chapter in this tumultuous journey. And it's going to be taking a lot of companies, especially more traditional "Quote unquote unsophisticated, if you will, manufacturing distributors, hard, you know, sort of like Main Street line mm-hmm. type of businesses, yeah. they're going to have a difficult time managing through this resignation. Um, it is truly not just a generational paradigm shift in how employees view themselves in the workforce, uh, uh, but." Um, yeah, I think to your you know, to your point, I think some of the, like the service based businesses, they're dealing with more knowledge workers. They're probably a little more uh, set up to deal with some of the changing expectations of their workforce. Um, whereas uh, some of the more manufacturing businesses, it's like this is your job and this is your job. And I think those are the ones uh, that will possibly be a little uh, blindsided by the Great Resignation you know, if it happens in their in their business because there's things that you that should be thinking about doing to kind of keep in touch with your workforce. Yeah, and, and so before you are able to codify, articulate those things that you need to do, you really have to kind of understand what the problem is. And not that we have all the answers, and I, for, for what it's worth, our company has been very fortunate. We have not had that attrition in 2020 and 2021. Yes, we did lose one key member of our team because of COVID, um, but we've been overall quite fortunate. And I would say, you know, knock on wood, I won't do it because it'll mess up the mic. Um, but here's our take, right? I think there's three things that are playing into this. And I mean, me personally, I've actually done quite a bit of surveying with our, especially with our younger uh, talent. You know, what has kept them around? especially as many of their friends have been fleeing the area, have been moving, and it's not because of sort of traditional life events. It's not because of, I got a promotion, I'm going to go. It's because they've sort of left whatever they knew behind to get to go after something else. You know, here's our three takes. It comes down to work-life balance, employer complacency, and pre-pandemic expectations. And I'd like to kind of elaborate a little bit more on each of those three. Yeah, I think on the work on the work life balance side of things, you know, there's employers owners have to do more now than they did before to uh, make sure that their people have uh, a a reasonable balance because there used to be a, at least a more of a physical separation, which was slowly being broken down by technology. But now there's not just no no boundaries on technology, but there's also no boundaries on the physical separation of work and home life. I think as employers, we need to do more and spend, have more effort to make sure that people uh, have the mental uh, space that they need to break from work. So you touched on two things. For knowledge workers, it is very difficult to work from home and have, never mind physical separation, just space, mental space. And this is not something new. I mean, I remember in probably 2006, 2005, I was in corporate, I got my first Blackberry, 
and that was it. It was instantaneously always on, real time, in demand. Your boss emailed you 10 o'clock at night. By 10:15, you were replying to him or her. That, and maybe that's a little bit of a generational thing. I, I didn't. We didn't grow up with smartphones, and but it was later on in our career, in late 20s, early 30s, that you you became you know this thing became your life right um but not to dwell too much on that because you know on the flip side the days again maybe this is a little more generational you look at your 20 something workforce mass exit is in investment banking right hot jobs you know you go into investment banking com- maybe less about commercial banking you go into sales um, you go into tech, you're, you're working long hours, and there is physical separation in many cases. There's travel, but it's the long hours, and I feel like, I believe, and I'm seeing it, uh, this generational gap, if you're, and I think if you go back to our podcast, I think it was in August or July when I actually interviewed four or five of our younger team members, that resonated the whole uh, work-life balance. So. It's less about work-life balance, and employers need to start thinking about it as life-work balance. Number two, employer complacency. And probably scratching your head, like, what, what do you mean employer complacency? I think, you know, I think what that means is uh, em- employers don't realize the effort that they need to put in to uh, keep their workforce engaged. It's not just about the paycheck. It's not just about the benefits. It's not just about the infrastructure that you have put in place and that you deliver to them on a, on a regular basis. It's, it's, uh, it's especially for small businesses, making sure that you're connecting with them, making sure that you're being transparent with them. I mean, just yesterday, the day before, we had our uh, town hall meeting. You know, that's uh, what's, you know, one of the things that we are doing to make sure that we're staying in touch with our uh, employee base. You know, we it's not the only time we talk to our, our people, but once a quarter, after the close of each quarter, we're uh, making sure that we have an all, all hands on deck meeting. Uh, you know, here's where we're at in the year. Here's uh, new developments. Here's new team members. Here's uh, here's what, how, how the company is performing. Making sure that we're being transparent with them so that they are, you know, can stay tuned into what the opportunities are here and uh, know that, you know, they can have room to move upward uh, here within the company, not just uh, leaving the company. Yeah, and employer complacency is over the last two years, employers were just focused on staying alive, right? Staying alive, surviving. And employees were just kind of going for the ride. Let's face it. I mean, if you go back to March 2020, everybody was shitting bricks that they were about to get laid off. Yep. And, and people were working, working from home. They were trying to stay connected. And that complacency has just become sort of that this is this is what it this is it. This is what it's gonna be like. And to that second point, there was this article in Inc. magazine, and the headline, I believe it was in the last week, the headline was Fighting to Keep Employees During the Great Res- Resignation. So a new survey suggests a free and effective way to hold on to your people. And this is critical for small businesses who Really, you know, you can't compete on price. So what else can you compete on? And again, it goes to, to that level of sophistication. Can you, can you break that mold that, you, that you've been in, right? Nine to five, I'm going to pay you 20 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour, $80,000 a year. And the magic ingredient, they say, is career transparency. They go on to say, there's a survey, something like half of all workers are considering quitting their jobs at the moment. This is, this is the great resignation and it has to be the number one issue for every single company. I don't care if you're a small business, I don't care if you're a venture backed startup, for every single employer. If you woke up on Monday morning and 50% of your employees did not show up, what the hell would you do? <laughs> and you know, we we saw kind of signs of this uh, back in the summer, and, and it was, you know, people started writing about it. But at the time, we were seeing it was you know there was a lot of people out of work, but it was hard to attract talent. And whether that was to you know traditional jobs, whether we saw that at some of our uh, you know recently uh, funded venture backed startups, 
hard to find people. Like, how is it hard to find people when we've got so many, so so much of the workforce able and should be ready to work? Um, but I think that is now pressuring or putting uh, employees to think, hey, I can. There's opportunity out there outside of this, outside of this, these four walls of this company. Right. And so today, September, uh, October seventh. Sorry, today, October seventh. Uh, initial um, jobless claims came out today. And we're actually within 100,000 of where we were on a weekly basis in 2019. So those barriers, those barriers to entry for employees, aka employers hiring, they're starting to break. So we all talked about the unemployment, enhanced benefits, all that stuff, the stimulus. Now that that's kind of behind us, and economists always said, it's gonna take six weeks to kind of work its way out. From the time that first, second week of September that uh, unemployment benefits run out, it was gonna take a good solid six weeks. And now we're starting to see the numbers. On the flip side, we're not actually talking about hiring. We're talking about retention. That's what the resignation thing is. Yeah. It's like current, current employees leaving or thinking the intent leaving in droves. Yeah, they've just seen so many headlines of whether it's signing bonuses or, or, or just hard to attract talent. Well, what, what better time to think about moving when the, there's a lot of demand out there? And so this article goes on to say the magic ingredient to get employees to stick around is just career transparency. And it's something that you and I talk about with our team members, and we even talked about it yesterday during our town hall. First thing was hashtag we're always hiring. Second thing, to be successful, the three keys to success is compliance. You've got to be in compliant as an employer for, for HR. Transparency. And then, and then company culture, right? And I talked about yesterday how we've, we've been fortunate enough that we do have a, di a diverse workforce. And in this diverse workforce, there, there are quote unquote clicks and people go out at night. People enjoy themselves outside of work. It's more of a, a friendly environment. So I think that's also a key to success. Those three things. One of the things that, uh, that we used and that I'm encouraging our customers to use is kind of a future state org chart, right? And your org chart may not change that much, but if you are growing, you know, what is it the, the positions that you're going to be hiring for in the next six, eight, 12, 18 months? Um, communicate that to people. That's about transparency. It's about career career transparency. What are the opportunities just out of the bag that are, are going to be here at your company for others to grow into or to seek outside candidates to, uh, to hire? So our third take to this is the challenge is pre-pandemic expectations. And so simply put, your employees' expectations have changed. Yet you as a small business owner, you as an employer, they haven't changed. And so we talk about the life-work balance, we talk about employer complacency, and then we talk about pre-pandemic expectations. Post-pandemic expectations look very different now. And if you don't embrace this, whether it is remote or hybrid workforce, a tech stack that caters to your employee base and transparency around career, career development, career mm -hmm. roadmap. What does this mean for me? What value am I actually adding to this thing we call a company? If all I'm doing is just showing up and going through the motions, you're going to end up losing that employee. Well said. I think those are, it, it's a important thing to think about, especially as we plan for 2022. Because if our people are not, our current people are not here in 2022, how are you? How are you going to keep running your business? And so, one last point from this article, from this survey: 38% of Gen Z employees are looking for jobs with greater transparency around the job path. That's your career roadmap mm -hmm. and training and development. Yeah. Th this is. 38% are looking, like they're looking, they're, like they're not thinking about it, they're not craving it, they're looking for that next job 
that has those two things. So and, and you want to be you want to be part of where they're looking. Very very sober. The article goes on to explain some of the whys and best practices. I think you should pick it up, take a look at it. Our newsletter is going to touch on this this week also. Part of why you're doing what you're doing isn't just for yourself, but it is to align employee behaviors to hopefully achieve and hit those goals. And so bringing employees along and other stakeholders is critical to the success of any company. But sometimes just simply laying out, hey, I want to grow 100% in the next five years. I want to be X. I want to achieve 60% gross margin profitability. I want to expand my service offer. That may not be enough for employees. And so take this moment also to think about things like vision, core competencies, core values. And I know for many of us, we don't take, we don't take that stuff seriously, especially when we are in the weeds day to day. But to get the most out of your team, Identify those things that resonate. We just talked about these surveys. They want career roadmaps. They want paths. They want transparency into their, uh, into their, you know, their opportunity. Yeah, and and you know, use tools to be able to like understand what what they're what they're looking for. What are what are they thinking? What are they feeling? You know, we care about that with our customers, right? We want the voice of the customer. We also need the voice of the employee. Yeah, you know, again, you count your blessings. We've been fortunate, but we're not immune to this. We are in the service-based business. We have many customers that are suffering from this. I had a conversation with a Midwest CPA firm that's doing more of the CAS, FAS thing than the actual traditional CPA. He's got about 60 employees here in the U.S. and 20 or 30 international. And he said, you know, up until this year, we've never had a problem hiring. We've never had a problem retaining. And he said this year, he has, he has seen something to the tune of 30% attrition. And I was just like, well, what the hell is happening to these people? They're like, you know, they're all leaving on good terms. Like, we're still, like, we're st- we're still friendly. It wasn't mm-hmm. because of discipline. It wasn't. Be, it was just because they wanted to go somewhere. And I'm like, but 100% of your workforce is technically remote. Like, where are they going that they can't continue to work for you? He said they just wanted to try something new. Some of them wanted to go work for a startup, a tech company. Some wanted to do this on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are people who are just. They're not physically moving, but they're they're looking for that to scratch the itch. What, what else can I do? And this goes back to, like, we want to make sure that they, they know that they can explore options at our company, at your, at your company, so that you can keep them engaged and challenged, especially if they're your top-performing talent. And I would say if there's one key takeaway from this conversation is stop blaming this shit on the government stimulus packages, lazy employees, and start reflecting on what you're doing or not doing to limit your exposure to the great resignation of 2021. I think that's a great, uh, a great takeaway from today. Cool. And so that's the beginning of Q4. And going into the home stretch, we are in the midst of planning season again. Before you know it, you got your tax planning coming up in November. Start thinking about your annual operating plan because it ties back to your long range plan. And then, of course, let's not forget about tax planning because you need cash to pay those estimated taxes. And one thing so many people forget about is 1099s. 1099s. It's not tax planning, but make sure that you got the infrastructure in place that you can actually figure out who you need to send a 1099 to. Because cool. I just saw that we did another one for a customer for last year that they brought to our attention about a month ago. <laughs> Way too late. Way too late. So I enjoyed the conversation around the great resignation of 2021. I think it's an important topic. It's a topic that we're going to be touching on more and more. I don't think it's, uh, I think this chapter is going to take a, take a few months, if not a year, to kind of play out. Um, you're dealing with people. 
people, personalities, and I do believe that there is a paradigm shift, um, even if it's just generational, it's there. It's a, it's going to change, change the groundwork forever. Cool. Thanks everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.